When talking about this kit, I can't start without talking about the anime where this comes from. Dina Zenon here comes from the anime SSSS Dina Zenon, where Asanaka Yomugi and the people around him get forced to pilot a giant mech called Dina Zenon by a hobo and fight to the death against Kaiju. What do I think about this show? I am finding a lot of enjoyment in it, although not to the extent of Gritman, though if they pull off the ending, they might reach the heights of Gritman for me. Getting back to the figure, when opening the box, the package comes with four separate figures. Starting off with... Dinah Soldier! When looking at Dinah Soldier, it's basically your typical pilot-driven tokusatsu mech with a dinosaur head. Dinah Soldier is covered in a deep crimson red with a few variations in which certain parts such as the chest, crest, and feet are covered in a yellow paint job. When looking at the articulation, Dinah Soldier here is pretty decent. The head can move up and down alongside the full 360 without a ri any rigid joints. The shoulders have a full range of motion with additional opening for future transformation. The arm can move left and right, the elbows bend to full up to 90 degrees, and the hands have a full 360. Similar movements apply to the legs. The upper leg has a full 360 without restrictions. The legs can move left and right. Similar to the elbows, the knees can move up to 90 degrees. And the feet can rotate a full 360, but it's very rigid, so beware when handling the feet. Size comparison. Here's Dinah Soldier next to High Grade the Gundam The Origin version, SH Monstars Godzilla, and fellow Gritman character Figma Grit Knight. Next, Dinah Wing. When looking over here, Dinah Wing is a futuristic tokusatsu variant of the B2 spirit. But rather than the black stealth overcoating, Dinah Wing wants to surface the air missiles and fighter jets to come get it as fast as possible as stealth is abandoned for a crimson red paint job and a blue overcoat in the cockpit, yellow V-fins, and a silver lining on the front of the frame and guns. When looking at the articulation, Dinah Wing for the most part is limited due to its area structural nature. The wing near the body can move a full 180 with the end of the wings can moving up to 90 degrees, but can't hardly move down. And the main guns can move front and back without restriction. Size comparison, here's Dinah Wing next to High Grade Gundam The Origin version, SH Monstars Godzilla, and Fake My Grit Knight. Moving to Dyna Diver, you can see that Dyna Diver is a submarine capable of firing SLBMs, or to specify, submarine launched ballistic missiles. Similar to the previous forms, Dyna Diver does come with a crimson red paint job, but mostly at the bottom. The top part is covered in a black paint job with a grey paint job on the missile silos. A point to note is that unlike the other figures, Dyna Diver over here comes with a special gimmick. If you pull the switch and press it, the figure initiates this missile attack as the silos open up. Size comparison, here's Dyna Diver next to High Grade Gundam The Origin version, Godzilla, and Figma Grit Knight. And finally, Dyna Striker. When looking at Dyna Striker, it is obvious that it's a race car. The wheels can move, and if you want, you can have fun with it. While Dyna Striker does have the yellow and red paint job, it is mostly covered in a grey paint job, differentiating itself from the other mechs. Dino Striker next to Gundam, Godzilla, and Grit Knight. Now, Henshin Jukai!
And here is Dynazenon. As a combination of all four machines, Dynazenon here is a marvel when it comes to aesthetics and designs. Good Smile Company gave it their all when it comes to the looks of the figure as the sculpt and paint job is marvelous as nothing looks cheap and instead it's reminiscent of a Gunpla similar to that of the Penelope or the Kushi Gundam. However, this is probably where the compliments end and the faults of the figure are revealed. When looking at the articulation, it's almost non-existent. The head movement while it's limited due to the extra parts and attachments. The shoulders can move only a little up alongside the limited front and back movement. The elbow can move only 90 degrees, and the hands can move a full 360. The legs don't get better either. The legs do have a decent range of motions. The same applies to the knees, but the feet are almost motionless. And that and the fact that the legs can't move sideways. The wings can move a decent amount, but it's restricted due to the guns. Thus, the articulation when compared to an SH Monster Arts or a Gunpla, this is literally SHIT! When looking at accessories, there isn't much to say either. Besides the standard bitch slapping hands, Dinozenon comes with two fists and a pair of grabbing hands. In addition, Dinozenon comes with a pair of blade effects that can be attached to hands. Besides the basic accessories, Dinozenon comes with an exclusive stand that can be used to attach not only Dinozenon but also the smaller figures that compose Dinozenon. Dinozenon next to High Grade Gundam The Origin Version, SH Monster Arts Godzilla, and Figma Grid Knight. Now, to transform Dinozenon, probably the best format of the provided figure.
And here is the most powerful mode of the titular mech. Dynarexu! Well, look at its particular form, it happens to be a mecha representation of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. As being the most difficult to transform, Dynarex still has its benefits. The design and sculpt is marvelous as each part, form, and individual mech blends in without any immersion breaking parts. However, when it comes to articulation, it is a mixed bag. While better than any of the previous forms, Dynarex over here still feels compared to a Gunpla or an SH Monster Arts. The legs are fairly good, but are unable to turn sideways. The wings do possess a wide range of motions. The tail movement is limited. The arms can move a little. The head can move up and down, but not side to side. And the jaws can open a wide range of for extra biting power. Size comparison. Here's Dynarex next to Gundam, Godzilla, and Grit Knight. In theory, Dynarex, while impressive compared to the previous forms, and in my opinion, it is my most preferred form, is still lacking in various aspects, making it disappointing overall. In conclusion, the DX Dyna Xenon set by the Good Smile Company is a disappointing figure overall, as, as besides the only plus, which happens to be the magnificent skull, every other aspect is a complete disappointment. Articulation accessories are archaic, and considering the price I pay for this, Compared to Gunpla or Monstars, this is literally shit. I can't out of my heart recommend this figure to either ordinary consumers or fans of the series. It makes me want to commit suicide. <laughs> this video is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. So I don't ask for your help. I beg for it! <laughs> On what, you might ask? This. And this. Please. I beg you.